Hello everyone, uh, Betty here. I'm going to be doing a book reading from one of my favorite books, Unbowed, by Wangari Maathai. And it is a phenomenal memoir, but also um, kind of an environmentalist novel. Um, at the same time, Wangari made a huge impact in Kenya, um, planting trees um, in her hometown where, you know, a lot of the forestation and vegetation was depleting and being used for lumber um, by privatized companies. And she kind of helped alleviate um, all of the I don't want to say stress because it's a it's not quite the accurate depiction of it but all of the like cultural disparities that were happening at that time and um, she made a huge political impact without even wanting to be political as well um, she thought she was just planting trees and yeah so we're gonna read her story um, I'm gonna start in, let's start with chapter one. Um, oh, and I have to brag a little bit, but I did get it signed. Um, she is my favorite author, so I was happy about that. <laughs> Okie dokie. All right, chapter one, the beginning. I was born the third of six children and the first girl after two sons. On April 1st, 1940, in the small village of Ehaith in the central highlands of what was then British Kenya. My grandparents and parents were also born in this region near the provincial capital of Nyeri in the foothills of Aberdeer mountain range. To the north jutting into the sky is Mount Kenya. Two weeks into Mambura na Ninjahi, the season of the long rains, my mother delivered me at home in a traditional mud-walled house with no electricity or running water. She was assisted by a local midwife as well as women, family members, and, and friends. My parents were peasant farmers, members of the Kikuyu community, one of 42 ethnic groups in Kenya and then as now the most populous. They lived from the soil, but also kept cattle, goats, and sheep. At the time of my birth, the land was Ihaith, was still lush, green, and fertile. The seasons were so regular that you could almost predict that the long monsoon rains would start falling in mid-March. In July, you knew it would be so foggy, you would not be able to see 10 feet in front of you and so cold in the morning that the grass would be silvery white with frost. In Kikuyu, July is known as Muaria, Muaria Nioni, the month when birds rot, because birds would freeze to death and fall from the trees. <laughs> we lived in a land abundant with shrubs, creepers, ferns, and trees, like the Mitandu, Mikiu, and Migumo, some of which produced berries and nuts. Because rain fell regularly and reliably, clean, clean drinking water was everywhere. There were large, well-watered fields of maize, beans, wheat, and vegetables. Hunger was virtually unknown. The soil was rich, dark red-brown, and moist. <clears throat> when a baby joined the community, a beautiful and practical ritual followed that introduction followed that introduced the infant to the land of the ancestors and conserved a world of plenty and good that came from the soil. Shortly after the child was born, a few of the women attending the birth would go to their farms and harvest a bunch of bananas, full, green, and whole. If any of the bananas had ripened and birds had eaten them, the women would have, the women would have to find another full bunch. The fullness expressed wholeness and wellness, qualities the community valued. Along with the bananas, the women would bring to the new mother's house sweet potatoes from her and their gardens and blue purple sugar cane. Kigawa kia niya miuru. 
Oh boy. I'll work on it, okay? No ordinary sugar cane would do. In anticipation of the birth, the expectant mother would fatten a lamb that slept and ate inside her home. While the women gathered the ritual foods, the child's father would sacrifice the lamb and roast a piece of the flesh. The bananas and the potatoes would also be roasted and along with the meat and the raw sugar cane given to the new mother. She would chew small pieces of each in turn and then put some of the juice into the baby's tiny mouth. This would have been my first meal. Even before breast milk, I would have swallowed the juice of green bananas, blue purple sugar cane, sweet potatoes, and a fattened lamb, all fruits of the local land. I am as much a child of my native soil as I am of my father, Muta Nijugul, and my mother, Wanjiru Kibucho, Kibicho, who was more familiarly known as her Christian name, Lydia. Following the Kikuyu tradition, my parents named me for my father, mother, Wangari, an old Kukuyu name. According to the Kikuyu myth of origin, God created the primordial parents, Gikuyu and Mumbai, from Mount Kenya, showed them the land on which they were to settle, west from Mount Kenya to the Aberdares, onto Ngong Hills and Kilimambogo, when north of Garbatula. Together, Gikuyu and Mumbai had 10 daughters, Wanjiru, Wam, Wambu, Wangari, Wanjiku, Wangyu, Wangeki, Wanjiri, Nyambura, Wairiyuma, Wamuyu, but they had no sons. The legend goes that when the time came for the daughters to marry, Gikuyu prayed to God under a holy fig tree, Migumo, as was his tradition to send him sons-in-law. God told him to instruct nine of his daughters, the tenth was too young to be married, to go into the forest and to eat, to each cut a stick as long as she was tall. When the daughters returned, Gikuyu took the sticks with them, built an altar under the Mugumo tree, on which he sacrificed a lamb. As the fire was consuming the lamb's body, nine men appeared and walked out of the flames. Ooh. <laughs> Gikuyu took them home, and each daughter married the man who was the same height as she was. And together they gave rise to the ten clans to which all Kikuyus belong. Even though the youngest daughter, Wamuyu, did not get married, she did have children. Each clan is known for a particular trade or quality, such as prophecy, craftsmanship, and medicine. <clears throat> the daughters made the clans matrilineal, but many privileges, such as inheritance and ownership of land, livestock, and perennial crops, were gradually transferred to men. It is not explained how women lost their rights and privileges. Okay, we're going to stop there for today. Um, that's kind of our 10 minute mark. Um, please let me know how you enjoy these. Um, I'm going to keep reading from the same book. So if you can remind me if I forget, we are on page five um, in the middle of the first chapter. Okay. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoy. Ciao.